Hey everybody, Zian over here from Nintendo Life. I have had a Super Game Boy for, I don't know, 10, 15 years, and I've never really actually got a lot of use out of it. I think mostly for the fact that I still have fun playing classic Game Boy and Game Boy Color games on the actual system that they were designed for, or even just playing them through the Game Boy Player on the GameCube. But I've never really given this much of a chance. I think I dabbled in some Pokemon games back in the day, but other than that, I, I haven't really touched it. Until recently, this was probably a couple weeks ago or I guess even a few months ago at this point I realized I was I, I've been buying up a lot of classic Game Boy and Game Boy Color games like I have these are these are two little bins here that I have that are just full of games well actually this one's half full but but the, I have a lot of games here and I started learning that a lot of these games have support for the Super Game Boy and support in ways that I didn't realize. I knew that some games had custom borders, but some of them have completely different color palettes. Some of them have additional features or little nuances that were changed to work specifically with the Super Game Boy. So today I wanted to just kick back and show you some of the cool special features and unique things that you can find within the Super Game Boy versions of these games. Now a lot of these things I found out just by simply plugging the games into the into the Super Game Boy and then plugging it into the system and, and seeing what they have to offer, but some I also found through the Nintendo fandom and the Wikipedia page for the Super Game Boy. So thank you to all the people that have gone ahead and contributed information to those, those uh, different pages. So, for, so quickly for anyone unaware as well, the Super Game Boy is a peripheral for the Super Nintendo that allows you to play Game Boy and some Game Boy Color games, basically the dual ones, on your Super Nintendo just by popping this into the system. And the way that it works to my knowledge, apparently, is that essentially inside of this are m the majority of the components that are in a Game Boy. So you you basically that that's why it's so big is because it just has lots of lots of little uh, things in there. There's lots of little Mario toads in here running around that basically just make everything work like magic, right? A absolutely. That's that's ab absolutely how it works. And now, not every game that was released for the Game Boy is going to have special features that work for the Super Game Boy. For example, Super Mario Land and Metroid 2 don't really have any bonus borders or special color palettes, but they do have some other unique features that were sort of added to them, and we'll, we'll talk about those in just a little bit here. But there's a Super Game Boy logo uh, right on the front that says Super Game Boy Game Pack, and that states that the game at least has some bonus features that are only it can only be utilized by using the Super Game Boy. So if you were to plug this into a, a Game Boy Player, for example, you wouldn't get those bonus enhancements. And the other thing I mentioned as well is that you can only play Game Boy and some Game Boy Color games on here. For example, SpongeBob Legend of the Lost Spatula will not work. Let's see what happens when we plug that in. So see the Nintendo Game Boy system screen pops up and everything. But then, when it comes to Spongebob, Spongebob Squarepants, this game can only be played on Game Boy Color. I like the idea that someone is addressing Spongebob about the the fact that his game can't be played on here, and he's just like, oh, why, why, Sandy? But yes, and so the reason that this cannot be played on there is because this is a, like, you know, just a standard Game Boy Color game. Any see-through games like this, they will not work on the on the Game Boy Player. But the, the black cartridge ones can work on original Game Boy and Game Boy Color, so in turn, these also work on the Super Game Boy. So to show you kind of what I was talking about with, with games that don't have special, you know, that were designed before the Super Game Boy came out, let's take a look at Super Mario Land. So this one I really like a lot because this, it doesn't have, there's no special border, there's no special color palette or anything, but when you start up the game, the first uh, color palette that it uses, because you can actually select, you can go in here and you can select from a number of different color palettes, right? And so you can change up the color however you want it to look. And the, the one that is set on here is F. And the cool thing with that is it almost looks like that this color palette was designed to be used with Super Mario Land because the colors match Mario perfectly and, and the world, you know, you have this sort of desert theme. And uh, and obviously we don't have any, I don't, I don't know if there's any facts or ev evidence that this palette was created for this game, but I wouldn't put it past Nintendo. Even look at how Mario looks up there. He looks perfect. And so, oh goodness, I'm selecting all these different colors now. Oh yeah, because there's all there's all sorts of different pages of color palettes that you can pick. There's four different ones, and so so then basically you can you can kind of customize whatever color palette you want the game to fall into. But I actually really like F a lot, so we'll stick with that. And then you can also you can change the borders of games even if they don't have any special borders. So you can go in and and modify that however you would like. Is that a desert one? If so, we need to pick that one. 
Oh, that's just kind of like a standard, like a Mario theme almost. Oh, no, it looks like a Harvest Moon background. But then let's take a look at Metroid, because Metroid is also a really good example of a game that doesn't have any, any, anything special in it, but they still used a color palette that was relevant and kind of, you know, sort of boosted the game above what it was originally supposed to look like on the original Game Boy. And this, this music is kind of haunting at the beginning here. And it's probably also just due to the limitations of the hardware itself. But uh, but yeah, I really like the menu a lot. And then Samus, you know, she's like red and yellow, kind of as you'd expect, or red and orange, whatever. And I, I love the green background. I think it uh, it really matches the uh, just like the feeling of of the Metroid universe. And I so this is I bought this game used. This is not my save file. So I have no idea where we are right now. I did just beat Metroid Samus Returns on 3DS though, so this is kind of cool to like come back and take a look at. And it, it really does look way, way, way better, in my opinion, than it does on the original Game Boy. Because you actually have some life built into the game here. Uh, and sadly, you know, if you were to play through this whole game, every world that you're going to encounter is going to be using, for the most part, this same color palette. You could manually just go in and change up the colors like whenever you enter a new area, which could be kind of fun, but Samus wouldn't know, she wouldn't no longer be, she would no longer be red and orange like we would, uh, we would hope she would be. So that's a bit of a bummer. But you know, I think this is still, this is still a really cool way to play uh, Metroid 2. So now I'm gonna be kind of breaking some of these, these games that I wanna show off in, uh, in different segments here. So this, basically, this part here, we're just gonna sh take a look at a bunch of different games that have uh, different borders. And so the first one I wanna show you is Conker's Pocket Tales. I didn't actually, I've never really played much of this game. I finally bought a copy recently and I've been on the hunt for it for a long time. And I just wanted one that was in good shape and I finally found one. And that's not what it's supposed to look like. This is better. So the menu screen, it shows that it's just black and white. But then the cool thing is when like the logos pop up, look at they're still full of color like you'd expect to see on a Super Nintendo almost. The Rareware logo looks amazing. And the other thing too with, with the Super Game Boy is even if you're playing a Game Boy Color game in there, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be utilizing the color features that are baked into these color games. Oh man, that is weird. I don't think I've ever actually like noticed this screen. I don't like that. It's kind of like it's trying to mimic the Super Mario 64 home screen. Wow, this is creepy. Rare, what were you thinking? I thought this game was supposed to be cute and fun. This is just terrifying. But what I was trying to say was, once we actually get into the game itself, it will not be in color. Some games will, but it's really dependent on what the developers decided to do with the game and, and, tr and how they tried to ut uh, utilize the Super Game Boy in turn. So... Oh, look, at it. it's it's uh, G-rated Barry, and it's Conker's birthday, or maybe it's Barry's birthday. I'm not sure. Oh, boy, a killer acorn. I don't like that. He's ruining the surprise. What? Oh, he just stole an acorn stole Barry? Oh, that that is a twist. So I wonder if, because some games, the, the background will change based on what area of, like, the level you're in. And I wonder if this game is the same thing, because right now we have the birthday cake and stuff everywhere. Oh, no. I guess maybe maybe the birthday will just stay. So this game actually looks like it does use a special set of colors because right now I can't actually you I can't access the the color palette feature. And so even though it doesn't really look like anything special here, if you notice, it's green outside, and then we go inside Conker's house, and now it's brown. So so there are some games that have actually set different colors to different regions of different parts of the game that you're going to be in. Okay, cool. So now we'll take a look at Wario Land 2. I think if memory serves me correct, this one also just had a cool border. Wario Land 2, what do you got for us? That's kind of a neat border. Is this like a full color intro cutscene too? That's one thing that I really like about, I think when I first, you know, started like dabbling and messing around with some Super Game Boy stuff, you just see artwork in some of these games that you would never see anywhere else. Like this this image of, of Wario up here kind of peering over the castle into his game is probably, to my knowledge, it looks like it would only be found in the Super Game Boy. And look at that, that home menu screen too, that's so pretty. And it does sort of, you know, once you start playing some of these games, once you get into it, start from the beginning of the stage, sure. So that's cool, you know, this, this splash screen here is color, but once you actually get into the game, everything sort of turns just back to a back to a standard color palette. And so that's it's a little sad, but you know, you can get you can get over it pretty quickly because uh, you know, some of these games don't have a another format to be played in. Oh, I am not supposed to go that way. Shoot. I think is there a Oh, goodness. I thought that was a 
I thought this was a wall. This black, this black doorway here. There we go. Hmm. Now, Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, I was told... Oh, here it comes. Hey, look at that. That's pretty. Yeah, I was told, I think it was through either the fandom site or, uh, or Wikipedia that this game had some borders. And I believe some games... Wow, someone sunk 130 hours into this game? This was not me. That's awesome. I hope it would be so cool if the person that did this was watching. But yeah, I believe some games actually have borders that will change depending on what part of the game you're in as well. And I, I'm not sure if this is one of them. You know, maybe once we actually get into a battle or something like that, maybe then yeah, the, the screen will change. But I've never played Monsters 2. I played one growing up, so I don't actually know how to go and get into a battle anyways. Yeah, get me into the arena. We won't worry about it. Let's move along to another Dragon Warrior game or Dragon Quest game. This is uh, Dragon Warrior Monsters, just the first one. This one I have played, but it has been years. It's been a very, very long time. Hmm. That's cool. This one changed up right away. IDOS made this. I had no idea. That's crazy. It's so cool to see, like now that I'm thinking about this, I don't, cause I don't, Square Enix bought IDOS or IDOS. I think it's I, IDOS is what I've always said. And then, so this was made by Enix. And so it's cool to see that Enix and IDOS were working together and then Square and Enix joined together and they made Square Enix. And now Square Enix owns IDOS. It's like, it's everything just came back full circle. That's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, let's just continue. Oh, maybe I should click versus mode. Hey, but here, look at, here's a new border. That's so neat. So I wonder if some of these games, you know, like if you get to do, if you make it to the end of the game, I wonder if there will be specific artwork that you, you know, a specific border that will pop up to sort of congratulate you for actually getting there. Because that was sort of a, a big deal for people back in the day, you know, like you would, you would, you'd play like a, a NES game or a Super Nintendo game and then your big prize for sort of beating the game would be this, you know, this big uh, piece of sprite art on screen or maybe like a small bit of text in a, not a cutscene necessarily, but but a few images or something like that to sort of celebrate and, and, and reward you in a way for finishing the game. I feel like that would be a really cool thing uh, for the Super Game Boy to have done. And maybe they did, but we're not going to be beating Dragon Warrior Monsters today. One of my favorite games ever made, though, is this next one. And it's probably a bit for nostalgia, but also just because it's, it's such a well-built game for the Game Boy, even though it struggles a little bit. But I had no idea for the longest time that this had a border. And look at look at that artwork in the background. It looks almost like a an anime in in many ways, you know. And that like artwork like this, I think is is kind of what I was originally hoping the Link's Awakening remake would have turned into. You know, you even using these these cutscenes here of of Link, you know that that was the art that I expected. And I'm still happy with the uh, the cutscene or the uh, the art style that we got with the the Grezzo remake. But you know, it's it would have been cool to see it done a different way. But so this game, I believe, Link's Awakening DX, specifically, if you play with the classic Link's Awakening on a Game Boy, you won't get the border. But I believe this uses a specific color palette as well. Let's see, though. Oh, it does not. So, oh, yeah, it does. It does. So the way that you can tell is it, if you, when you pop into the, the, the palette screen, if it even lets you, actually, uh, if you see this face here. That is the specific color palette that's designed for this game. So here we can still go pick, you know, any of these other palettes. And actually E there is so close to the specifically designed one. But I suppose what that could mean is that as you're playing the game, you know, you might go to a different area and you might, you know, like you might go into a... Actually, let's just go into that dungeon and see if it looks any different because it might not still be green. Ah, uh, it is. So, but it, it could be that there's certain parts of the game that are not green like this, uh, you know, kind of like we were seeing with, uh, was it, what game was it? Uh, Wario even, I guess too, or, um, or, or Conquer, you know, how certain areas were green and some were brown. That same type of thing might happen here in Link's Awakening. And I don't think I'll have the time to really run around and explore for the moment, but I'd be curious, you know, if, if any of you have uh, played through some of these games entirely on the Super Game Boy, uh, we would love to hear about it in the comments below. And uh, cause you know, this is something that I feel like not a lot of people really talk about the Super Game Boy because there's so many other ways to go out and play some of these games beyond using this system. Like I, I don't know. I, I think there's, a, you know, like a sort of novelty to just playing in this aspect, even though, you know, you don't, you're not getting to play in the full screen. 
and you're not playing it on the go, you know, you're, you're losing features, but it's just still kind of, um, it's just a neat way to be able to play these games. So this, uh, very obviously, is another Dragon Warrior game. This is a combination of Dragon Warrior 1 and 2 on the Game Boy Color. So this is a black cartridge. That's why we're able to play it on here. It's not one of the translucent ones. And so you can see, like, the, the logos kind of look different. Let's see. There's no... Uh, I can't ch customize the color palettes on this one, so it looks like it's its own special thing. Let's go with Stud, because he's level 6. He or she. Or they. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, my gosh. And look, it, it almost looks like the the border, the text bubble on the ground. I thought it was actually kind of floating there over the bottom of the screen. It's it's not. You can kind of see the, the color behind it there. But the way that it's, it just, oh, that's so cool. And we're in the throne room right now, too. And, you know, that's in, in the throne room in the game. So we're getting that same kind of background in turn. Let's go explore outside, though, and see see if that changes at all. So we're still in the castle right now. But let's get out of here. Is that person just sleeping or are they dead? Hello? All right, moment of truth. Oh, it's changing. That's so cool. And that's the Akira Toriyama artwork on the side as well. I believe that's from the original Famicom release of the game. That's so cool. Yeah, because here in the West, you know, our our version of, of Dragon Quest or uh, Dragon Warrior didn't get any of the Akira Toriyama art outsourcing it to someone else because they, I don't know, they thought Americans wouldn't like... <laughs> Wouldn't like that style art. That's pretty cool. I kind of want to find another city though and see if the art will change if we go there. If we if we can just find a standard town to go to. Or even a dungeon. I wonder what that would look like. So here's a dungeon. And it's changing. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. It's so fun. Well, obviously there's more to see in Dragon Warrior uh, 1 and 2. There's probably even more backgrounds to see in Dragon Warrior 2. Um, I'm, I'm curious. Let's go take a look. I hope it's not just the same borders. I wouldn't blame them. Um, stud again. Level 19. Never dis never disappoints. Okay, so we're in the throne room, so like that at least makes sense. But let's actually get out of the castle and see if the, the artwork... Oh, cool. We have a party behind us too. That's nice. Uh, let's see if the artwork actually changes though once we get outside. And it should... Realistically, it should show the art from the cover of Dragon Warrior 2. It does. It's not... Oh, it, it, it is a bit of the cover art. Because actually, the, the character on the right, I believe, is the main character. And he's definitely on the front cover. That's pretty cool. I don't like it as much as the other one. Like, it, the fact that they kind of made it look like uh, film cells isn't really my favorite. But, but in this regard, it's kind of cool in battle because you actually just see... It feels like you have your party surrounding you while you're fighting. And that's, that's kind of neat. And there's probably more, you know, uh, borders throughout the game. This one is a Tetris game that is not a Tetris game. It does not deserve to be, it, it should not be called a Tetris game. Oh, that's kind of cute. Yeah, this is Tetris Attack, if you didn't read the screen already. And it's still, I've never played it on Game Boy, um, but this, it still has the Yoshi theme and everything. No, no panel to pond theme here. Well, let's just do Endless. Let's see if the screen changes or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to be, oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, Poochie, right? Yeah, so it looks like you get a very standard border with this game here. Nothing to nothing to write home about. It's fine. But uh, but I'll take it. It's like nice that they, they put in the effort for it. And then we have Game & Watch Gallery. Some of these games I actually have boxes for. I just forgot to, forgot to show that off. This one uh, actually advertises on the back of the box how different the game is with the Super Game Boy. And it looks pretty intense. This kind of looks like a Yoshi's Island background or like style artwork maybe they just ripped this from yoshi's island i don't know but i like i like the home menu that's cool it looks a lot better than just playing with you know black and white on the original game boy let's play octopus i think i remember how to play that one oh and that's another thing i read about actually is when you play game and watch gallery games on the on the super game boy like this you actually they show off the super nintendo instead on screen so that way you can look down at the controller and be like oh this is what i'm doing and actually i i get tripped up all the time i like forget i'm so used to pressing y and b that i forget that like b and a are the buttons i should be messing around with all right let's do the modern version though let's see what that looks like okay so it just uses the same menu screen and that's kind of nice though that like you have some gold over here that's cool Let's see what classic mode looks like, because I think I was dabbling in classic earlier and the border was different. Yeah, so look at that. It actually looks like you're playing a Game & Watch, and it's it's like full color too. That's really neat. Oh, full color to the extent of, of a Game & Watch, you know. Wow, I'm just getting trucked. I'm so sorry, Game & Watch. So we also have Game & Watch Gallery 3. I want to see 
what that looks like. That one should be crazier, right? Because it's a newer selection of Game & Watch games. Maybe it'll have cooler borders. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. It's kind of fun. It's like a beach look. It looks very Mario-esque. You got the, uh, the big green things in the background over there. I'm kind of getting some like Mario's time machine vibes, you know, like when I think I think it's Mario's time machine where you're like surfing around on the water in some like weird machine thing that I guess the time travel device. I don't know. I played that like in a hospital when I was a kid, I think. What fond memories, right? I, I really like the color palette of the menu here. Wow. And you can still change it from something else if you want. That's interesting. I thought this was going to be a game that was sort of locked into. Uh, you know the the menu and by the way if any of you are trying to do this at home too You just tap L and R by the way to pop up the the menu there to uh, to switch out all your stuff And then you press it again to make it go away uh, Let's play Donkey Kong jr. That's probably a that's a good one. I like Donkey Kong. Let's play Let's try modern and we'll do easy after I got scooped up by the octopus before Okay, so we don't have a different border here or anything color palette looks fine nothing to write home about uh, but uh, Let's get that key in there. Can I do this? Can I actually save him? I just want to save him once. That'd be really nice. Come on, Donkey Kong! Almost there. One more key. Come on. This is what I get for playing on easy mode now. Ah! Shoot! Ah! There we go. Come on, Goombas. Oh, shoot. I'm Dunzo. Oh my gosh, I won. Well, I mean, I half won. That bullet bill did not strike me. That was crazy. Okay, so now I want to see what classic mode looks like. And we'll do we'll do hard this time. Because people probably are going to want to watch me get wrecked, right? Oh, that's kind of fun. I like the color palette, too. That That's really nice. That's a good choice. Oh, shoot. Can you jump? See, I... Oh, you can. Okay. Oh, no. Wow. So there is one other game in here that I wanted to show you that... So Mario Bros. is traditionally a... It's a dual screen game on the... the with When it was originally made as a game to watch. And so I want to see how that works on the Game Boy here. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Poor Mario Bros. Like this is... This was their, this was their game and watch life. Isn't that something? I don't even know what they're doing. It looks like they're picking up bricks. Maybe they're picking up pizzas. I don't know, but it's kind of a it's it's a cool way to do this because it really does look like you're you're playing on a on a game and watch. I like it. So then we have Donkey Kong Land. This one has like a really neat border that kind of looks like I mean it looks like it was directly ripped from the Super Nintendo version of Donkey Kong Country. You know, with the, uh, the that's like the palm trees that kind of look like I don't I I don't know. Tell me in the comments what you think those look like. I don't know. I like this menu screen though, it's kind of neat. Rambi is very important here. Oh, and then we just get the green, the green Game Boy style. Let's see, does this game have, oh, it does have, it does have unique colors for different areas. So that's kind of cool. I don't think I've really ever played Donkey Kong Land before. I think I've only, I mean, I've, I've played Country 1, 2, and 3, but I don't, I don't know if I've really actually, I never owned it growing up. And haven't really had a, a lot of interest going back. Oh, I forget about that. The screen real estate is pretty rough from what I remember hearing. So it's really hard to predict where enemies are going to be. So maybe it's just best that I stick to the ground on this one. Like I don't go up there as much as I want to collect those bananas. Ah, well, you get the picture, you know. But now let's take a look at John's favorite game. And no, it's not Donkey Kong Country 3. It's even better than Donkey Kong Country 3. Well, maybe it's an inferior version. It's a Redux? The Redo? This is Donkey Kong Land 3. <laughs> Look at all those clocks. Come on, John. Look at that picture. Dixie looks like she's being chased by Kitty Kong. Oh. Look at that. I've made so much progress in the game that it doesn't even know what progress is anymore. I don't know what I just did, but I'm in a level. I'm used to, like, whenever I play Donkey Kong Country, I just sprint everywhere. And maybe that's a bad thing, but that's just what I do. And the controls felt a little off, but I think it's just me. Because now it, everything seems fine now. And see, look at Kitty Kong surviving. He's doing okay. 
Wow, it's still so impressive that Rare was able to get this running on the Game Boy. Like, Donkey Kong Land is fun, but this is just... This feels like I'm playing Donkey Kong Country, even if the screen is a little tiny. I really want to see if there's different borders, though. They wouldn't just do clocks for the whole... the whole thing, right? Maybe there's boss battles. Are bonus stages different? They are not. <laughs> Sorry, kitty. Another one that has seemingly a lot of a lot of effort put into it on the the part of the developers is this next one. If it loads up right. Okay, good. It is. This is Mole Mania. This game was worked on by Miyamoto, I think. And I haven't played too much of it, but it's kind of fun. It's pretty unique. And yeah, the border, it you know, it looks like a looks like a mole digging a hole. It's kind of fun. Let's do a new game though, cuz maybe there's I think there's a cutscene. Oh, yeah, there is. And look at it. It's in color. I love that. I would love to see, you know, I haven't played much of this game, but it is it has a really neat premise. And I would love to see this game or just series come back in some shape or form. Even, you know, just a full color remake for, for Switch. What a jerk. He's stealing all the kids. Oh, is that is that Grandpa back there? Grandpa Mole back there hiding? I bet our player character is still in the hole. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> no. Nope. She's probably out like messing around, getting a good old drink of water. Your wife and kids are mine. Jinbi, how could you do this to me? That was my wife. Oh, that's so nice. Look at how it just flips the color like that. That's the thing with a lot of the Super Game Boy games is you'll find the color is mostly utilized in the menus or splash screens or different things like that, you know, like the the games often don't change up too much, but they can, it just depends on, depends on the game. How do we get over here? Oh yeah, yeah. So the premise, not to turn this into a Mole Mania video, is that you can dig underground and you can, you basically have like a different layer that you can, you can dig back up through to get under stuff. It's kind of neat. So that's Mole Mania and it looks pretty good on Super Game Boy. The Super Game Boy does not take the actual color of a game if it's made for color. And if that's not evident with Pokemon Pinball, I don't know how else to explain it to you. I don't know what this color palette is. It's so strange and it's it's washed out and it's just, it's like gr kind of green. And, and what is this border? What does the checkered panel have to do with Pinball? Is this like, a, did someone have like a NASCAR kick or what was going on? I don't know. Uh, sadly, my copy of Pokemon Pinball, the save battery no longer works. So I have no Pokedex, so I, I can't show you the actual Pokemon but we can hop into a game here. So, you know, normally in pinball, you have a red table and a blue table. Well, let's pick the blue table and see what happens. Look at that. It's red. One cool thing you can do though, is we can still go in and we can adjust the palettes. So that looks terrible. There's some blue. That's still very red. That's better. And that might be the best we get. Let's try G. That's probably, yep, that's not happening. So that's pretty good. So see, it's not awful, but this is one of those games that's, um, it's just better playing on a Game Boy Color if you can. I mean, if you happen to only own a Super Game Boy and you want to play this on your TV, or I mean, you could play, wow, you could play on a, a Game Boy Player as well and you'll get full color. But this is just one of those games that it's just not better. There are a couple others that are pretty cool still. So Pokemon Blue, for example, came out in 1998. Maybe it was 99. I can't remember. I think it was 98. But they still managed to pack in these cool borders for the game. So if you're playing Pokemon Blue or Red, you'll actually get a different border. And you can see this intro cutscene here is full color as well. Even the menu looks great here or the start screen here as the Pokemon spill in and out. You know, like the logo up top is, is yellow. I really like the, the detail that they added into this game. And so this is, I, this for a fact still is my save file uh, from when I was playing this game really recently. I, I played it uh, to completion this year. And, and so I think the majority of like the towns and things like that will all kind of have this purple and uh, blue look. We can actually quick go, let's fly somewhere quick. I think, uh, yeah, I have a Pokemon on me. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Pallet Town and see what that looks like. It's probably blue, but... Maybe it won't be. Look at that, it's actually green. This looks very faithful to the original Game Boy, actually. I like this a lot. 
Oh, and the color did change too. Look at that. So Pokemon Blue actually has uh, quite a few different things going for it. And then you can switch back to standard color palette whenever you want by hitting the X button. So the thing I like the most here is that your Pokemon, when you go to look at them in the menu here, will actually be full color. So there's my Raichu, which I named Sparky, is, is actually yellow. And let's take a look at my Serendipity, which is uh, Lapras. That should actually, yeah, it's actually blue. And so that, you know, they, they put a lot of effort into making sure that the Pokemon actually looked the color that they should be. And I, I think that's, you know, if you had a Super Nintendo back in the day and being able to play this on the big screen and see them in full color would be a, just a really neat thing. Because playing even on a Game Boy Color, you don't get that out of it. However, if you do happen to play this on a, uh, at, through Pokemon Stadium on the N64 with the N64 transfer pack, you will get the same borders, I believe, and the same color features playing it on the N64. And so, you know, if you have that option, maybe this looks even familiar to you from growing up. If you never played on a Super Game Boy, maybe you played it through the N64 and then bam, this is where your memory lies. But we're just gonna completely wreck Gary's Rattata right now. Oh my gosh, oh, there we go. Solar Beam was charging up, that's why. Done deal. But yeah, I really like this a lot. Now, Pokemon Silver as well also has some pretty cool features. This has a, a full color intro, I believe here, if memory serves me correct, let's find out. Look at that. So nice. Underwater. Get it? I'm drinking water. I definitely didn't spill. But yeah, this looks really nice. That's my serendipity. Did any of you watch that movie back in the day? I think it was like a pink, a pink Loch Ness monster. That's nice too. Yeah, I really like that they were able to figure out how to use the colors of the Super Game Boy in this way. Because this game also is not always full color either, and we'll, we'll see in a little bit here. But it's nice that the intros are, the border's pretty cool, the menu even looks really nice too. And obviously this is a bit of a different case. My save battery's dead in silver as well, so I can't, I can't, I don't, I can't just boot up and show you Pokemon. But this, this game's a little bit of a different case considering that the you know if you play this on a game boy color it's just going to look better but it's still really neat that they actually managed to incorporate these color features on the super game boy and just kind of like pokemon blue or red or yellow if you're playing that on the super game boy all of your color or all of your pokemon sprites will be colored same with in battle and in the menus but then when you're roaming around everything else is kind of just like weird weird colors and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and uh yeah so I probably don't need to show you more of this. Let's get on to, we only have a couple more left to check out, so let's do that. Now, the Pokemon trading card game is also, most of it is in full color. You know, it, this menu screen is not as perfect as it would have been on the original Game Boy, because normally, like, all of those energy types would be, you know, that one would be yellow, green, brown, uh, that one's white and purple, you know, so you're missing out there. But once you actually get into the battles, uh, we get to continue from this diary. I don't know what that, I don't know where that's going to put us. Yes, let's continue from the diary. Hopefully it just puts us into a battle. Oh, a battle with Lance. This actually might be the end of the game. I'm so sorry if so. Yep. Our, our deck is ready. Even though it's... I mean, if someone made it to the end of the game, it's probably okay. But so there we go. So Ronald. I thought we were fighting Lance. Whatever. So that's cool. The character portraits are colored. Everything else is black and white here. But I really like the detail on the outside there too. That's really cool. Ugh, oh, Ronald didn't draw a Pokemon. What a scrub. Do I get to draw an extra card because of that in this game? All right, here we go. Here's what I wanted to show you. Basically, all of the card art is colored just like it would be in the game. And I, or just like it would be in real life. And I, I the, the color version of this game has to have as detailed of sprites. I don't know why it wouldn't. But like the plus power, that looks like it was ripped straight out of the card game. Vaporeon looks really nice. Is there another Pokemon down here that I'm forgetting? School War Turtle looks fine, but... All we have to play is Eevee. Let's see if we can draw some more cards, though. I don't have any other... No, I don't have any other basics. Come on. Come on, game. Flip that coin. I think the coin's normally yellow, too, so we're, we're kind of missing out there. I mean, it's just a coin, I guess. But Dratini looks nice. You know, like, there's... I appreciate that a lot of this stuff just made the jump from, from the Game Boy color version to the Super Game Boy. So we only have two more games left. And these ones honestly are the ones that surprised me the most. And it makes sense that it worked this way. I just can't believe the developers actually managed to cram this, this extra little trick, this extra feature into the game. So this is Bomberman GB. 
which it has a really cool like little intro cutscene here, you know, with this whole Bomberman theater. It's very, it's full color. I really like that a lot. And I'm gonna skip part of it just so we can get into the meat of why, what I wanna show you. But so now we, we go down to battle mode here, right? And battle mode, if anyone's played Bomberman before, knows that it's, it's a multiplayer thing. And you can see on screen, it shows one to four players. So the cool thing, so I have one controller here, right? Here's another controller. Look at two at the same time. I'm gonna plug that in quick. And I, I don't know what button I have to press. Look at that. There's just multiplayer. And now I pick, uh, we're gonna throw some computers on there. Done deal. So now you can actually play multiplayer, a Game Boy game through the Super Nintendo. I. I don't know why that sounds like such a tough thing to do, but I just never thought it would have been possible. And so, yeah, so I think the majority of the Bomberman games allow you to do this. So if you happen to have, oh, I just killed myself. If you happen to have a, a Bomberman Game Boy game laying around, pop it in your Super Game Boy with your Super Nintendo, you know, throw another controller in and give it a shot. I don't think this is not like the best way to play Bomberman. I think just play a Bomberman Super Nintendo game instead. But it's still just neat that, you know, especially back in the day, if you had a Super Game Boy and you had one of these laying around, like, you just now suddenly have another multiplayer game that you can play with your friends. And that, that's just really cool. It's nice when developers go above and beyond in that case. And I think I won. I wasn't paying enough attention, but yeah. And now there's actually another multiplayer game that I want to show you on Game Boy. And now I will say there are parts of this one that it doesn't look great, but it works. And sadly, I think it was the intro or maybe the borders that got me really hype. I was like, oh my gosh, this game, no way. How, how much did they improve this for the Super Game Boy? And, you know, like I said, it's cool that they got somewhat Super Nintendo looking sprites on here. You know, uh, I, you know, I've, I've never seen these characters in these poses before. It's kind of fun. And like the menu, the menu music sounds pretty good. But I mean, that's just rare thing, right? Okay. But let's actually get into, oh, cool. So it looks like there's a cutscene system that uh, that has some kind of full color art as well. That's kind of neat. We don't need to see that right now. Let's get into the fighting. So the cool thing here is this game is also multiplayer. So you can do a two player killer instinct battle on the Super Game Boy on the Super Nintendo. Oh no, where's my guy? There he, well, not my guy. I like these two characters, but I'm definitely not a killer instinct aficionado. That's cool too, the, the the splash screen, like the versus screen, that looks really nice. Spinal, that's his name. So you can see that the actual battle screen the, itself is just pretty much just like two colors. It's pretty rough. There's white, blue, and dark blue. And uh, you know, it, it definitely, I think the fact that this game is multiplayer boosts its, boosts its playability above and beyond, you know? Because then you can, you and someone else can at least struggle together while playing this game. But, but almost why wouldn't you just play Killer Instinct on Super Nintendo together? You know, obviously, if this is the only option you had back in the day, that's fine. And, uh, but it's still, it's cool that they went ahead and threw it in there. I appreciate it. And there you have it. That's that was pretty much like I don't know, 20, 30 Game Boy games that. Well, now it's like 15, but a lot of them have special features in the uh, in the Super Game Boy. So, you know, let us know in the comments down below if there were any of these games that you didn't know had bonuses for playing them on the Super Nintendo. Or let us know if there's something else that you, you really enjoy playing on the, uh, in this format, you know, or that you played growing up. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and find a way to click that subscribe button with a Super Game Boy. And then let me know in the comments down below how it actually went for you. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time. Oh.